Thank you very much. Distinguished guests from politics, agencies and industries, dear friends of space, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great day and I can tell you I'm here quite often but it's always uh, really something which is not only inspiring and exciting but I'm always uh, also nervous, uh, nervous. So we could witness, you could witness together with us a great day, a great launch of a very nice launcher and also of a very excellent satellite. Sentinel-2B was launched by Vega. Thanks to Ion Space, to CNES and their teams here at the European Spaceport for this beautiful launch. And thanks to the European Commission that has entrusted us with the task of developing their satellites. And of course, thanks to all the industrial teams that under the lead of Airbus have delivered such a great satellite. My thanks reach also my colleagues in the directors of Earth Observation, Launchers and Operations, Josef Aschbacher and uh, Daniel Neunschwander over here, and Rolf Densing in Darmstadt. Yes, we, you all heard it. We have now this tandem of two Sentinel satellites, Sentinel 2A and 2B. We have some more Sentinels, but these two are now twins directly uh, in the optical range. And it, they give a valuable, um, a valuable information for scientists, but not only for scientists, but also for people using this data for different applications, as we heard, agriculture and others. Images of floods, volcanic eruptions, landslides, all of this can be observed through these uh, satellites and therefore help the life on Earth. So this all is done. The satellites are produced. The satellites are now in orbit. Um, and they are in orbit and they will uh, further be developed with new satellites um, to come. At the same time, we have this new launcher, the uh, Vega launcher, which is already now with its ninth uh, successful launch in a row, one of the most successful launchers um, because uh, it started from the very beginning until today without any failure and uh, a launch is always some risk. So we have this which is what is called small launcher. Again, 140 tons is for me not a lightweight. Proving that the label made in Italy is very fashionable also now in space business. But I'm also happy that we are not only saying made in Italy, but also made in ESA, made in Europe. Thanks to the Italian Space Agency and therefore uh, the president of ASI, Roberto Battiston, is here with us. Thank you very much also. Uh, to you and congratulations to you for this big success. But this is not the end of the day, it's not the end of the launch, it's not the end of the satellite, okay. The um, satellite has now to um, also to deliver, but at the same time we are developing new generations of satellites for Earth observation, we are uh, developing also new launchers. You heard about Vega C, so the next generation in the launcher family will be Vega C, using, of course, technology from Vega, further develop it, and we will use the same technology then also for Ion 64 and 62, and therefore we will have in the future a very competitive launcher family, Vega C, Ion 64 and 62, and all of these are launched then from here, from, the, from French Guiana, the European spaceport. And also the work for the other launchers are going on. All on, of this is on track for Europe to be competitive and maintain its leadership in the fast-changing commercial launch uh, service market while responding to the needs of European institutional missions at the same time. So it's uh, another proof today of European capabilities. I'm personally, I'm still dreaming of the United States of Europe, but I'm not blind. I can also hear what is happening in the world but I'm still conf uh, um, very much convinced that we have to do. We have to work for Europe, and this is a good proof, and therefore my motto is United Space in Europe, because this is what we are doing here, together with our partners in industry, in agencies, and also in the different member states. Congratulations again to all the people working for this launch and making this launch and the satellite a success. Thank you very much. Mesdames, Messieurs, uh, au nom de la Commission, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the Commission, I would first of all like to express my gratitude 
I'm not going to miss anybody out if I can help it. First of all, thanks to Ariane Space. As you have already recalled, Ariane Space has just put into orbit the fifth Copernicus satellite. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say that in the context of our relations with Ariane Space, we have always enjoyed excellent relations. Recently, we learned that we had lost Mr. Claudel, who was in charge of liaison with us, and I have to say we greatly appreciated his contribution. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Tsela on behalf of the Commission. I'd also like to thank, obviously, the European Space Agency, which is the prime of the Copernicus program. The launch was one that absolutely had to succeed because we're embarking upon a period of budgetary negotiation with other ambitions for Copernicus after 2020. And uh, it's obvious that here I'm speaking in the presence of the Italian ambassador and the European deputies, it's easier to ask for money when you can show that a mission has been a great success. It's much easier to do it in those circumstances than when you're facing problems. I'd also like to thank all of the member states. I think you've understood that the Copernicus program aside from having a scientific objective, also serves to federate, because Copernicus, I believe, is going to be the first integrated program for Earth observation globally. And this will be thanks to the coordination between the European Union, its institutions, ESA, but also the different member states with their technological experience and knowledge enfin, in the area of space. Lastly, let me say that the Commission has always shown great interest in space programs, and this goes far beyond admiring technological prowess, because after all, we don't, it's not just art for art, it's not just to put satellites into orbit, it's in order to allow society to enjoy benefits. And if we take a look at the different challenges facing Europe, climate change, security challenges, and perhaps in the future, border monitoring issues. I think that programs such as Copernicus will provide far more than just their technical prowess. And here we're talking about a tremendous industrial tool, a tremendous scientific success. But it's also a project that will unite and will contribute to strengthening security in Europe. Thank you. Distinct guests, it's a very exciting moment. Copernicus is coming together, uh, and a further big step has been achieved tonight with the launch of Sentinel 2B. Uh, these launch events are always very exciting and very dense. It's bringing together the entire community contributing to this big enterprise, Copernicus, and I think it's a, a big, big uh, step forward and a big relief, let me say, when we see this uh, launch happening so successful. So therefore, my first thanks go naturally to Ayanna Spas. Thanks for having us brought again safely into orbit. Uh, it's not by far not the first time. It's uh, a very good routine in the meantime, and it's always a big relief when you set us, uh, set us in the target orbit and uh, bring us up there safely. I would also look back back the last eight years, where we developed this uh, very complicated and sophisticated satellite. And during this time, we experienced a very good cooperation with ESA. I think uh, this was uh, exemplaric, and it was exemplaric in a way that uh, a lot of good cooperation took place, a lot of uh, good technical exchange took place, uh, even in the customer and industry um, cooperation. And I think uh, this is really 
uh, an exemplaric way of working together and bring complicated things forward. Our satellite is now in the hands of ESOC, a very routine and experienced team. Please take care, handle it with care, and uh, let it live uh, as it is planned for the uh, coming seven to 12 years and make out of this a very good mission. And I'm for sure convinced that you will do this. Thanks, of course, to the member states and to our customers, to the uh, European Commission for making this very huge and comprehensive and complex program a success. I think uh, the secret lies in the continuity in which you are pushing forward this complex program, and I think uh, this needs to be really honored uh, and underlined. This is a big, big step forward today, but it is a step in a huge, huge program which Europe is installing. Last but not least, I would like to acknowledge uh, the industrial team which I have the honor to represent tonight. There's a lot of work being done. There's a lot of very high sophisticated technologies built into this satellite to make the mission a success. And this is not coming only from Airbus. This is also coming from Airbus, but also from a huge European team, 50, 40 companies uh, across 20 countries of Europe plus the US, plus Canada. This is, I think, a big, huge enterprise, which we made, obviously, to a success. If you allow me to just mention it, I heard in the background uh, the team applauding, which means that the solar array is deployed. And uh, I think the biggest step for the first part of the mission is by this achieved. That's the first, of course, to be continued. And I think uh, short con congratulation to the industrial team, from my point of view, this is a big job, great job done. Uh, thank you for this, and we are looking for a very good and successful mission for the next decade. Thank you very much. With today's launch, Vegas accomplished nine consecutive successful flights since it came into service in 2012, fully confirming the extremely high reliability achieved by the World Launch System. I would like to extend our thanking to all the actors that have worked hard to make this incredible series of success come true. In particular, I would like to thank Ariane Spass that commercialized Vega and runs this flight campaign ESA in the Vega IPT for the effort in development and in maintaining the launcher in its qualified and operative status. CNES, that is safely operating the launch base that is hosting us here in Kourou, ELV and AVIO, and all the subcontractors involved in the industrial structure of Vega that keep doing a careful and wonderful job in the production of the launcher. The Sentinel-2 launch was initially planned with a rocket, but in order to keep the programmatic schedule as swap with a more reliable way Vega has been implemented, thank ESA and EC for this result. Vega is affirming itself as a worldwide workforce for the LEO mission and for launching more satellites. With the new and enhanced version, the Vega C, its launching capability will be extended, allowing to offer a reliable launch solution for all the radar satellites, Sentinel-1 and the Copernicus program, as well as the Italian national program and the Cosmos came second generation. The presence of EC here in Kourou by Mr. Philippe Brunet is a very important signal for the United European space, able to exploit and develop the wealth of capabilities made available by the excellent work at ESA. Copernicus evolution will be an opportunity for consolidated European leadership on Earth observation following the main principles. The choice should be done based on maximal utilization on data already collected. For instance, CO2 and hyperspectra spectra will be built on our previous investment on Sentinel environmental data. The quality of the offer services will make the difference and this will be important to make us use of the H2020 to develop the competence for the development of critical technologies and the non-dependence, including access to space. I wish, therefore, 
that the design of the future Sentinel satellite will take into account the use of Vega and its evolution as a launching solution. This would ensure an appropriate balance of the allocation of the satellite between the various European launchers. In conclusion, I see great opportunities for Vega and the Copernicus as a part of the very successful EU, ESA, and Member State collaboration. Thank you all. Well, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is late. I think you've already heard many different speeches and thanks. And I, too, on behalf of the CNES, would like to contribute and make my thanks. Vega had its first launch five years ago. I think we all remember the date quite clearly. We all remember the attention as it mounted before that launch. And I think we all remember remember the wonderful explosion of joy that we all felt after the success of the launch. And that particular joy remains in my mind. Stefano was, of course, there, and all the other Italian teams as well. Of course, we need a Vega because we need a launcher that can complete the Ariane 5 family and Ariane 6 in the future. So we need this sort of launcher. And I think uh, France and Italy uh, should uh, once again uh, say that uh, the decision to develop Vega was a very good one. Now, Sentinel 2B is the fifth Copernicus satellite. Yes, it's the fifth. Is once again, as I said, uh, uh, an exemplary program. It's for the United Space of Europe. As Werner said, uh, I think uh, it is. Uh, a wonderful program uh, which is uh, designed to provide services uh, for uh, the inhabitants uh, of the world. And it is really a program that belongs to Europe. And uh, the European Commission, ESA, the national agencies, uh, ESI, CNES, uh, industry, uh, we have all worked together to enable these uh, large programs uh, to take off, and we are proud of this. CNES, of course, is very proud to be part of Sentinel 2B. We have pooled our, all our experience concerning going back to spot to serve ESA and make sure that top quality imaging is possible and uh, also uh, the enfin, right entendu, sort of uh, resolution. I'd Le also like to say uh, that I would like to thank uh, the uh, Centre Spatial in Toulouse, uh, and I would also like to thank uh, the uh, spaceport here. And I would like to say that at the beginning of the year, we have six launches uh, that are planned. So once again, I would like to thank the teams uh, that uh, make it possible for uh, the CSG in her 2017 uh, to follow the same uh, pace uh, as 2016 and prior years. I'd like to thank uh, Avio, uh, Regulus, uh, and also uh, all those uh, who enable uh, the spaceport to really be a beacon in the space world. Thank you to all, and congratulations once again. So again, congratulations to all for this outstanding success. We will, we will be back here on the 21st of March, in two weeks from now, with our heavyweight vehicle, Ion 5. It will perform a dual launch to put onto geostationary orbit two satellites, one for the Brazil, SGDC, for Visiona Tecnologica Espacial, and one for Korea. Korea Sat 7 for KT Sat. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the end of the evening. So a successful evening, a successful launch, and during those speeches we had confirmation uh, there of the solar panel deployment and here we see 
Isok. And its mission accomplished for Ariane Space, Sentinel 2B has joined its twin in orbit, ready to help us find out more about our planet. Congratulations to all our colleagues and in particular to the Sentinel 2B teams, to European industry for this major achievement and to everybody at Airbus, Defence and Space and all the industrial teams and companies. And of course, to all the ESA teams, well done to Ariane Space and the CSG for an excellent job. Best of luck to everyone at ESOC and Ezrin now with the next phase of your operations. And thanks for joining us here live at the Guiana Space Center.